You try it. He about to get toe up. He about to get toe up. Welcome back to the Cave Dash Reacts channel. How is everybody doing today? Alright, you guys, so today's video, Friday the 13th, part. I'm not even gonna try to see what that is. Uh, I'm just gonna say 13. I don't know. Uh, Jason takes Manhattan 1989 kill count. <clears throat> Alright, let's get into this video. Hopefully it's a good video. It's a good one. They actually know how to act in this Today, one. We're looking at Friday the 13th, part eight. Oh. Jason takes Manhattan. Ha! Huh? It really should have been titled eight. Jason on a Boat. The last Friday movie of the 80s that came out in 1989. And in many ways, this film is a milestone in the series. Boy, 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 the 80s. Okay, I'm going to be quiet. I'll be quiet. So I won't miss it. Which is great. Which is great. But it's also the film that broke Paramount's reluctant support of the series because it had the lowest box office yet. And also because the movies were getting kind of embarrassing. After this, they'd sell the property off to New Line. And Jason would lie dormant for four years before returning to the screen and going to hell. Jason Takes Manhattan is also the most ridiculous movie we've oh, seen God. so far. Jason for sure teleports all over the place now. The ghost of his what younger the? self keeps popping up to check in on leading lady Rennie. We've got hair metal music video sequences, and really, the whole fucking thing is just a mess. Ooh. But as a kid, I actually really liked this one. Mostly because it was something different, and also because I really dug that Metropolis song in the opening credits. <laughs> Now I feel ashamed about both of those opinions, so let's quickly move on to the kills. <laughs> the kills! The movie starts off with a montage of 80s New York, showing it to be the place of the worst nightmares. A place of muggings and barrels of sewage and uh. junkies. Hey guys, could we could we hold on that shot of the junkies shooting up for like 10 more minutes? Thank you. Yeah, just, just keep it rolling. That's what the people want to see. Anyway, if you're excited for Jason to get to all these charming locales, you'll have to wait over an hour because this movie subtitle is just a dirty, dirty lie. Instead, we start right back at home on Crystal Lake where pretty boy Jim Miller, God, he is really pretty, and his girlfriend Susie Donaldson are getting frisky on his boat. He scoops her with the tail of Jason before his anchor drags over an electric cable that brings Look Jason back to life from his new blood resting place. He climbs aboard, and since Jimmy conveniently owns an exact replica of his hockey mask, axe mark and all, he suits up and is ready to kill for another 90 minutes. He misses the horny teens Ooh. with the spear gun, but quickly makes up for it by sticking ah! Jimmy in the gut with the gun itself. This kill actually always really confused me as a kid. I thought that those were fake. Why are you watching this as a kid? They were accidentally already there when he stabs Jimmy in the gut. Turns out that's just what spear guns look like. Either way, Jimmy dies up against the window, rubbing his bloody hand against it and leaving a mark. I actually kind of like that shot. Jason goes deck side and finds Susie hiding. He uses the spear he missed uh! and gives her the most menacingly slow stab I have ever seen. Like, she had time to write a will while he was bringing For real? Her. He finally sticks it into a fake torso with very prominent fake nipples. Decent start to a Friday movie, and if you like seeing Jason kill people on a boat, oh man. He's a bad movie, movie man. For you. Bad. With the setup kills out of the way, like, you, you could have been, here, like, ran, grabbed the, grab the, the thing, the like. Event. She's coming aboard this high school graduation. I would have ran out of breath by that by the time he said me. Teacher doesn't want her to since she's afraid of water. But her other teacher, Colleen, is adamant about it, so Rennie takes her pup Toby and joins the rest of her graduating class, which is like a dozen people, I guess, including her boyfriend Sean, who has a hard time opening doors. His dad is the captain of the ship and apparently an admiral. I don't know in what navy, but it doesn't matter. Let's get this ship on the road. Now everyone knows, of course, that Crystal Lake is attached to the ocean or a river or some body of water that leads to New York City, right? So it makes total and complete sense when Jason just drifts into harbor and climbs aboard the SS Teen Victim. Yeah. It sets sail and Jason waits the for finding his next victim. Hair rocker JJ, who's jamming out in the bowels of the ship. A guitar to the face stops her rocking and her life. Don't worry, JJ. Jason saved you some embarrassment. Hair metal was on its way out. Thanks, Nirvana. As night descends, the rest of the ship is pretty popping. There's an underground boxing circuit where champion Julius reigns supreme. He's getting adored by these two ladies with big old ladies' hair. They're both super stereotypical. The blonde Tamara is, of course, the bitchy prom queen. Talking to the prom queen, Eva. And the Asian chick, played by Kelly Hugh? Guess what she's worried about? 
think that it's just, you know, if we get caught, I could lose my science scholarship. Yeah. Of course. Top notch. While they're doing bumps of no Of course. Of seeing images of childhood Jason that are hilariously cheesy. We don't get another kill until 30 minutes in when Jason comes upon the boxing guy that Julius defeated earlier and sticks a sauna rock through his chest. I don't know what I like more, the guy wriggling violently or the fact that his organs were apparently flammable. Also, that looked like a shitty cruise ship on the outside, but it's got a sauna on board? Sign me up. That's what, bitch? <laughs> Corona we have to make not, not now the blonde bitch roll by pushing Rennie into the water where we have more cheesy child Jason followed by some bloody sink water and it's cool worry, eh? even more cheesy kid Jason when he comes out of the mirror and has a gay old time choking Rennie seriously that kid looks like he's having a blast good for him you gotta make sure kids have enough play time in their development you know Tamara solidifies her blonde bitch bona fides Ooh. by blackmailing Charles with geeky Wayne in his video camera and this doesn't really go anywhere because in the very next scene, Jason busts in on her after a shower. Girl, you should live. The mirror and then stab All her these people could have ran. She was a bitchy antagonist. There's no way you get into me. me feel bad. That's too much time. That glass looks and also the way she's cowered up in that corner crying for mercy. Way to affect me emotionally, Jason takes me mad. The ship heads into a storm, which is the perfect time to amp up the killing, so Jason takes it to the bridge. First, he kills Chief Engineer Jim Carlson with a harpoon to the back multiple times. Just really getting in there and making sure the job's done. I do okay, like he did, Jason. He did. The bridge and he's he did. Back. It's a nice touch. He then makes the captain go down with the ship by slitting Admiral Robertson's throat with a machete. Isn't it like he slid it? They do copy slow motion for some reason. Maybe so we can enjoy this guy's acting. Oh, what? My throat? No. <laughs> Sean finds the bodies, and after some understandable freaking out, seeing his dad's dead body at all, he summons all the teens to the bridge to tell them there's a killer on board. Julius takes a leadership role, which leads to one of the few times in the series where people actually arm up and go after Jason, which, you know, it's kind of cool. Their man-child hunt doesn't do any good for Eva, though, who wanders onto an 80s dance floor of death, where Jason teleports around the room multiple times before raising her into the air and strangling her to death, saving her from having to listen to any more of that shitty, shitty 80s music. By the way, Kelly Hu is a pro. Her body looks lifeless AF when Jason drops her to the floor there. She is the best actor! Jason, we get one of those random non-Jason kills after Nerdy Wayne loses his glasses and blindly shoots a random crew member to death. Sucks for this crew member. He's in a Jason movie and he doesn't even get killed by Jason. Also, Wayne, that's manslaughter, dude. Good luck defending yourself in a maritime court. Oh, wait, you're probably not going to have to worry about that since Jason shows up and tosses him into the ship's circuit board or whatever, Ooh. resulting in an immediate Fire. electrical explosion in true Friday the 13th fashion. An artsy close-up on Wayne's hand as he dies almost tricks the audience into caring about him, but not really. I mean, he was a fucking nerd. Underdeveloped character Miles Aww. is the next guy to go. He I like nerds. The ship to get away from Jason, but that doesn't help because, guys, did we mention that Jason can definitely teleport now? Because he does. He teleports right up the mast and tosses Miles down onto a weather vane, killing him. A lot of the kills in this movie were censored uh, by the radio, uh, just like uh, uh, Seven, but I kind of like the way this one. Uh, Jason then throws Julius overboard, but don't worry, he'll be back later on in the best scene of this movie. While Rennie gets attacked by Jason and hallucinates that swampy little boy version, yeah. somewhere, Uncle Charles is trying to hunt down the deckhand. I bet the little kid got paid a lot. For the murders. To be fair, the deckhand is not great at making himself look not shady. But alas, Charles is proven wrong when the deckhand stumbles into view with an axe through his back. Uh. So that's pretty conclusive evidence that he is not, in fact, the murderer. Good job, deckhand. The court of dead meat finds you not guilty. Mm -hmm. Really dead. Oh yeah, also, you might remember there were a bunch of other kids. They were like white people dancing on the ship before. Apparently, they all drowned. Oh wait, I left the others in the restaurant. Oh. There is no more restaurant. I'm not gonna count those because who knows how many red shirts that was, but kind of unceremonious of the film to do that when they could have gotten a lot more fun kills instead. I like it this music. finally time, finally, to abandon this lame-ass cruise ship. And remember, this is a full hour into the movie. The survivors get onto a lifeboat, rescuing Julius in the process, and row their asses Black guy's not dead yet. until they reach New York City, or rather alleyways and alleyways. He's gonna die. He's gonna die. Could Jason he inexplicably die. follows them and has a cute moment with a billboard. Then Rennie gets kidnapped by those junkies and holy shit, forcefully Ooh. drugged. Ooh. Wow, Jason takes Manhattan, you really went there. Jason shows up and saves her, first sticking a needle through Holmes's back when he's trying to force himself onto Rennie because might as well make that scene even more horrific with some attempted rape. Pretty bad when Jason gets uh, good guy. Jojo shows up and gets mad that Jason's on his turf, so he shoots him a couple of times before Jason slams his head into a pipe. The guy should have known. I'm sure everyone always told him he would die if he kept hitting that pipe. Just kidding, they weren't smoking crack, they were shooting up heroin. Rennie runs away, saved by Jason. Thanks, Jason. Now it's finally time for that awesome no. scene I teased earlier. And for once, I'm not liking something ironically. 
Julius runs into Jason on a rooftop and decides to put his boxing skills to the test. He then proceeds to punch Jason no. for over a minute straight. No. He just really gives it to no. him, jabbing him in the face, giving him a bunch of body blows over and over again across you the try it. The scene you try is made it. awesome by the long shots, the total lack he of music, get and the fact that Kane Hodder is he to get toe up. these punches in real life. Julius finally gets tired and gives one badass final line. Your best shot. Fuck. Before Jason obliges and KOs him oh. with a single decapitating oh. guy, putting a neat little button on this one. Oh. Best part of oh. all, he didn't even litter. Jason is one thoughtful tourist. At this point, I look at the runtime oh. and shriek because there's still 25 minutes left of this movie. I don't know how, but let's do it. Okay, a friendly Irish cop tries to help out the remaining survivors and gets ambushed by Jason, who drags him off into an alley and he had the most honorable killing. Day. I'm sure that guy was just a week away from retirement. Rennie climbs over the seat in this very realistic cop car and first hits adult real Jason and then slams into child fake Jason in his most hilarious appearance yet. Wow. This causes her to slam the car into a fiery mess which explodes and I would be scared of myself if I saw me like that in the uh, This time movie. the hands of our protagonist. You better step it up Jason, you're letting other people rack up kills in your movie. Rennie has a flashback remembering how much of a dick Uncle Charles is they can't why she's having these hallucinations in the first place. So she runs off and Sean follows after pushing Charles into a pile of shredded paper. Jason then chases Charles, teleporting into the second story of a building and throwing him out of it, then picking him up and drowning him in a barrel of sewage. Take that Uncle Charles, your old fashioned Ooh. parenting method is definitely cause for you to be violently drowned in a septic liquid by a terrifying serial killer in a hockey mask. Better watch out, parents who spank your kids. Jason's coming for you next. With that, we have the final girl circuit beginning in earnest. Jason chases Rennie and Sean onto a subway where they try to kill him by knocking him onto the third rail. Yeah, like he's never been electrocuted before. Then we get one and drowned. The entire series decomposed and came back. They actually were able to shoot New York. That is Jason Voorhees in the middle of actual Times Square. Despite how bad this movie is, there's no denying how awesome that image is. It's only cheapened a little bit by this hokey bit where Jason shows his face to some punks, causing them to run away in a very Scooby-Doo-like manner. Oh, also, this happens. And that's me again. They said the name. Rennie and Sean run into a diner, and after oh, Jason damn. follows them inside, a chef approaches Jason and gets thrown into a mirror. I didn't think that counted as a kill, but the internet is telling me it does, so fuck it, here's another death. But seriously, look at the size of that dude. You think he's gonna die from that? Bullshit. Rennie and Sean wind up in the sewers. For real. And tries to sell us a big block of shit than Crystal Lake's supposed passageway to the Atlantic. Toxic waste, huh? The sewer floods out with this stuff every night at midnight. Yeah. The sewer floods out with toxic waste every night at midnight. Okay. Jason then accosts the sewer worker and, much like the cop, drags him off screen to kill him with a wrench. Although this time we at least get this Hitchcockian silhouette of the kill. Really? Rennie manages to fight back a little, splashing toxic waste into Jason's face, which causes him to rip his mask off and reveal a very dumb face. Just like stuff with that gnarly face from Part <laughs> 7, but <laughs> Jason still almost gets Rennie and Sean before the giant toxic waste flood starts barreling towards them, looking like The Shining, but with bullshit. It overcomes <laughs> Jason and lights him on fire? What? And in the end, somehow reverts him back to his childlike form? What? Did it really happen? Is it another one of her delusions? Who the fuck cares? This is <laughs> shit show makes no fucking sense. And why the fuck was it a hundred minutes long? Fuck this movie. Let's do the numbers. 20 people die in Jason Takes Manhattan. 18 of them from Jason and two of them from accidents. Although Wayne would definitely go to prison for that shit. 15 of the victims are male with only five of them female. The biggest gender imbalance of victims in one of these films yet. At an unreasonable runtime of 100 minutes, we come out to a death on average every five minutes, which is on the quicker side for the series. I'm gonna give the golden chainsaw to Julius because it's such a great moment. And now he had the most honorable really kill. Lena's death has a lot to choose from, but since I didn't even think he was killed, I have to give it to the diner chef. Fun fact though, that actor would end up replacing Hodder as Jason in Freddy vs. Jason. And that's it. Released in 1989, Friday the 13th Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan. Maybe the worst one in the series. Wait, what's that? Jason goes to hell next? Oh, uh, y'all wanna look at that next? Join me next week. So all of the Jason's movies were totally, completely bad. They were bad? I didn't even, I didn't even got to look at the movie. To know that it was bad. Bad acting, bad kills, with the exception of maybe one or two. Just all around bad. And for Jason to be so 
um, Freddie and Jason to be so like popular. Well, the new Jasons now in the 2000s and the Freddies are good, probably are like better, but dang, 80s, 90s, that was bad, man. That was bad. I already know y'all want to look at Jason Goes to Hell next, the final Friday. It was bad. But Julius, he earned his death. That was a, that was a good final death for him. I want to read death. It was. You guys, hopefully this video doesn't mess up when I'm um, editing it. Editing it. Editing it. Uh, I'm still working on my new editor I have. And uh, it's killing me. It's killing me. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, comment, share, like, subscribe, push that bell to be notified when the next video drops. This has been Nothing Miss Completion, and I'm out of here.